Hi, this is Rob Smith from Bain Data Solutions. For more tutorials and information about services I can offer, go to baindatasolutions.co.uk. This is part four in the series of tutorials on how to develop a animated bubble chart. In the last series, we mainly concentrated on filling this array called array all points which includes all of our static data points and then interspersed in between those sort of interpolated um, sub points which will provide our, uh, the data to help smooth the transition between the between the static data points so we've got all that set up so we've got an array with all our data points in and we're just going to now build a subroutine which iterates all of those sub points so first of all what we need to do is we're going to refer to the total amount of sub points which we already don't mention but we don't mention it within our initialized sub procedure so if we set that as a global variable and also we're going to start referring to our chart so if we dimension a chart object uh, chart object and if we we should set that chart object set so, equals worksheet dot chart objects and we'll have to go and name that chart so let's call it chart one now by default um, charts are named chart one uh, or chart six in this instance because I must have had some pre-existing charts but it's a bit uh, can be a bit um, poor practice to use the standard names because they're so akin to one another if you have more than one chart so let's let's have a slightly different name chart one so that's good and let's dim series as series and let's have for our loop that we're going to set up We'll have an integer for series. So for int, so c equals one to int series count. Uh, SRS count. So for each one of our series. Um, First of all, we need to um, need to have another another loop. So, for each one of our points that we're going to, so in point equals one to long long points. That should be long, not integer. Just in case we've got stacks of them and what we're going to do at each one of those is set the series so set the series equals our chart object actual chart within that chart object so the chart object is the 
the wider surround which will include all of the uh, legends and titles whereas the chart in the middle is what we what contains our series collection so um, so we're going to look through each one of our series and our series we'll get the x values will be equal to RA main points and that will be for our x values it's 1 and our month will be Oh no, sorry, our point that we're dealing with will be int point. I should possibly call that long, but hey ho. And our final one will be the series. And do a similar thing for the y values. Um, and our z values, there's a property of a series called bubble sizes, so that'll do us nicely. Main points, and that's our third. And pt, and series, and next and series and we'll just put in a do events here so this so will make sure our worksheet updates so we can see the changes which have which have gone on uh, so that's our final end point and that's the that's the bulk of it but uh, let's go to our worksheet and I assign a just whack on a button and assign that to iterate and we'll say show change over time and I've just realized if we're gonna have this as a the sub procedure that we're kicking off with, we need to, need to make sure it initializes all of these variables and fills our array first of all. So then that's that's that done. And let's just give it a while. Um, or maybe it's not y values. Oh it's not y values, it's just values. And uh, our metric series, so it should be series first. Uh, sorry, I forgot the order of the array. So let's stop that because. Oh, after main, main it should be all. I bet you all saw that as well. Oh, all points, not main points. Um, let's try that again. Oh, well, it seems to be just kicking off from the point where it failed. So as you can see one of the problems with this is that it um, as the points in the chart change and the highest point increases the the axis just uh, resets itself so it went up to 140,000 there so we can just quite simply change this by by putting in here um, 
the maximum value for that axis so it went up to 140 so if we change that instead of 80,000 change it to 140 and this one the sorry the other axis went up to 50 I think so if we change that to 15 instead of 25 that should stop some of our wobbling around let's try that again and we're getting somewhere close to where we want to be um, right what I didn't do was set the minimum so um, I set that in order and do the same on this one though I'm not sure it went negative um, yeah that's fine again okay that's getting near to where we uh, want to be so um, one thing that we want to do is make these probably make these all the same color so let's um, I'm just going to skip us forward now. I, I, I spent a few minutes formatting this chart so that it um, all the colors were the same. I also put in a text box um, called month text which you can rename by just typing in the, uh, the name box. I added this um, slider control and went into format and assigned it so that its link cell was up in C20 and then in our gaps box I added 25 minus C20 so effectively the number of gaps is going to be determined um, it's going to be set higher or lower depending on where the user puts this slider so a high value will reduce the number of gaps and a low value will increase it to a maximum of 25. Um, I also um, added in some code which fills the month value and does that by dimension a shape and a date and string to do with the month. So as it's iterating through all of these points, uh, we check to see if it's the first month that we're at. Then if uh, if it's the first point within a month, by checking to see if there's a remainder. And when we divide by um, the number of gaps by using the modulus function, then we get the date from our months month range of text. So if you recall back in the first um, first part we set months there and then I use this rather uh, round the houses method of getting um, getting the actual month that was um, the month uh, date value from that cell and then converting it into a string into a nice format and then editing the contents of that text box and that near enough takes us to to the end so if we just um, try clicking this now I've actually said it's like quite slow but um, just about watchably slow So as you can see, there's sort of smooth transitions between the data points, but you can see the inflections where uh, the data points uh, change angle of um, direction. I also added in a hidden data series. So in case the in case your data points the the size of the bubbles uh, increase and decrease significantly. Um, if the, especially the largest one, 
then you may find your bubble size is changing even though there's been no change in the underlying data for that um, series so you get around this by using a hidden series so just added a series to the chart and set its set its um, x and y values to be minus 30,000 so it's not shown on this chart so it, you know it's way down way down in bottom left below our um, minimum value that we set on on the axes and its maximum value is 18,000 uh, which is the maximum value in our chart so that means that we've got a static a static maximum value that's not going to change so the size of the bubbles will always be um, shown related to that and I think that just about um, finishes off everything I wanted to show in this series I, I hope you've enjoyed it I'll post a link to the um, to the file on, on the website but if you've got any questions or comments uh, please leave them below I will try at some point to leave a, a more succinct just overview of the data file um, for those who are just interested in the, the end product but um, Oh, and one more thing to note as well is that we've tried to do um, to make the code as um, as reusable as possible. Pro really, the main thing that you should need, to, the only real definite thing that you need to change, is the way it's it's unlikely that you'll have your data set up exactly the same way that mine is. So having the x values and the y values and then the z values on top of each other. So obviously the main thing is the the change of this data here so if you can change these ray uh, change this code so that it puts your x value x y and z values into the correct um, or it retrieves it from the correct place then most of the rest of it should just come together as long as you name things the same as same as I've named them so you've got this um, month text and chart one but as I say any questions uh, please feel free to ask and uh, I'll do my best and if you want um, me to do this work for you then um, I'm more than happy to do so um, just get in contact and we can hopefully come to some sort of arrangement okay cheerio hope to speak to you again